Hi everybody, Mr. Gerhard here, and we're going to talk about section 6.6, .6, which is solving radical equations. We've been working with radical graphs and uh, radical functions and radical expressions and simplifying and inverses and all that good stuff. Now we're going to go about um, solving radical equations, and there's a three-step process. Step one is to isolate the radical on one side of the equation if necessary. We're going to get into some situations where we're going to have radicals on both sides, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, two is to raise each side of the equation to the same power. So if it's a square root, we would square both sides. If it's a cube root, we would cube both sides. Um, and that would eliminate the radical and obtain a linear quadratic or other polynomial equation. And then step three is to solve the polynomial equation using techniques you learned in previous chapters. So we've already talked about how to solve linear, quadratic, and polynomial equations. That's what we need to do then. And the fourth step, which is really 3B, is check your solution. Checking your solution is probably the most important thing because when we get into some of these situations, we could have like a negative number here. And if we get a negative number, we can't take an even root of a negative number. That's our domain rule number two. So we got to be careful about that. So always check your solution when we're solving radical equations. So we're going to work through a bunch of different examples here. Um, we're going to do it kind of quickly. If you need to see them again, go ahead and hit rewind and uh, watch them over. Take notes if you can, and uh, we'll go from there. Sorry about that message. So here we go. The first uh, problem says the cube root of x minus 4 equals 0. So our first step is to get the radical by itself, which right here is the radical, the cube root of x. So I'm going to do that by adding 4 to both sides. And I'm going to get the cube root of x equals 4. How do I undo a cube root? Well, I cube both sides, and that's going to leave me with x on the left side, and it's going to leave me with 4 cubed, or 64, on the right side. What do I have to do? I have to check. So I check by saying the cube root of 64 minus 4 equals 0. Uh, well, the cube root of 64 is 4, and that would leave me with 4 minus 4 equals 0, and 0 equals 0, and so that checks out, and we're good to go. So x equals 64. That first problem is solved. See, not too bad. Let's try another one. Here we have 5 minus the fourth root of x equals 0. Now since it's 5 minus the fourth root of x, I'm actually going to add the fourth root of x to both sides just because I want to get it to be positive um, here on the right side. And that's going to leave me with 5 equals the fourth root of x. Um, and then I'm going to raise both sides to the fourth power. 5 to the fourth power is 625, I believe, and x is equal to that. Um, so if I plug it back in, I say 5 minus the fourth root of 625, and that's equal to 0. 5 minus 5 equals 0, 0 equals 0, and so we're good to go. And there's our answer, x equals 625. Let's move on to some other ones. Here's another problem that is a little bit different. You might say, well, wait a second, Mr. Garrett. I thought we were doing radical problems. Well, we are doing radical problems. And if you remember that 2x to the 3 halves is really 2 times the square root of x cubed. We can do that by putting it in a radical. But my suggestion is to get this part, the x to the 3 halves, by itself first. And if we do that, then we'll show you a little note a little neat trick to get rid of the exponent. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2, eliminating this 2 and getting that x to the 3 halves by itself. So we get x to the 3 halves here. And 250 divided by 2 is 125. The next step is using the power to power rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides to a power. And when we have a power to a power, a to the m to the n, is equal to a to the m times n. Now I really just want x down here, and that's x to the first power. So in order to raise a power to a power, we multiply. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, because when we multiply reciprocals, we get 1. And so on the left side here, we get x to the 3 halves to the 2 thirds, which is x to the 1. Here on the right side, we have 125 to the 2 thirds. What does that mean? Well, now I can write it as a radical and say, well, that's the cube root of 125 
and take that answer and square it. So the cube root of 125 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So x equals 25. Again, I should plug it in here and figure out what's going on. I'm just going to do that um, just by vocally verbalizing it. x to the 3 halves means the square root of 25 is 5. 5 cubed is 125. 125 times 2 is 250. And so it works out, and x equals 25 is our correct answer. You should probably write them down, but I want to try and save a little bit of time here. Here we have 3x to the 4 thirds equals 243. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 because I want to get that x to the 4 thirds by itself. So I get x to the 4 thirds equals, that's 81. All right, 243 divided by 3 is 81. I'm then, then going to raise both sides to the 3 fourths because that's the reciprocal. This gives me x here on the left. And on the right, I have the fourth root of 81 cubed. Well, the fourth root of 81, 81 is a perfect fourth, that's 3. 3 cubed is 27. And so 27 is equal to x, and that is my solution. To verbalize checking it, I would say x to the 4 thirds, that's the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 to the fourth is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. And so that works out, and we're good to go. Next example, it's going to start getting a little trickier now. We have uh, the square root of 4x minus 7 plus 2 equals 5. So here's my radical. Always identify where your radical is first. And if that's my radical, I need to get everything else away. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That's simple algebra. I have the square root of 4x minus 7, and that's equal to 3. And then I'm going to undo the square root, and I do that by squaring both sides. Squaring the square root gets rid of the radical, and I have 4x minus 7. On the right side, I have 3 squared, which is 9. Now I have a linear equation right here, and I can solve that by adding 7 to both sides, giving me 4x equals 16, dividing by 4, and giving me x equals 4. Now is when checking really is going to come into play because now we're going to start squaring some things and doing some other stuff. If I do 4 times 4, that's 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. So for this one, we have the square root of 2x plus 8 minus 4 equals 6. So again, we're going to isolate the 2x plus 8 minus 4, and then add 4 to both sides. So add 4, add 4, and then I get the square root of 2x plus 8. And that's equal to 10. I'm going to square both sides to undo the square root. I get 2x plus 8 equals 100. Subtract 8 from both sides. Gives me 2x equals 92. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 46. Plug it back in. 2 times 46 is a 92 plus 8 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Minus 4 is 6. So that one works out as well. So some of you are probably wondering why we have to keep checking. And those are going to come in here shortly, I hope. Um, this one here, we have radical here. This square root of um, 3x plus 2. And here we have negative 2 radical x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 square root of x to both sides. And in doing that, what I'm going to end up having is just one term on the left, the square root of 3x plus 2, and one term on the right, 2 radical x. Now, to undo a square, I square root. And I'm going to square root the entire right side as well. I should have probably been putting these parentheses in here the entire time. But the square root of 3x plus 2 squared is just 3x plus 2. On the right, the square root, uh, or 2 times the square root of x squared, I have to distribute this square to both the square root of x and the 2. So 2 squared is 4, and the square root of x uh, squared is x. Now I have 3x plus 2 equals 4. If I subtract 3x from both sides, subtract 3x from both sides, then I get 2 equals x. Plug it back in, you get 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is the square root of 8. Here, plug in 2 and I get 2 radical 2. If I do that, the square root of 8 is 2 radical 2, because we break that down. 
2 radical 2. 2 radical 2 minus 2 radical 2 is 0. And so that checks out, and there's our answer. One more example like this. Again, let's add 3 square root of 2x to both sides. If I do that, that's going to give me one term on the left and one term on the right. If I were to square the left side right now, that would give me some crazy things, and it would not allow me to have the uh, radicals disappear. So I don't want to have that happen. So I go ahead and I have the square root of 4x plus 28 <clears throat> on the left, and I have 3 square root of 2x on the right. Again, I'm going to square both sides to undo the square roots. When I square the left side, I get 4x plus 28. When I square the right side, I get 9 times... 2x, because that square root of 2x squared just becomes 2x. And then I get 4x plus 28 equals 18x, because 9 times 2x is 18x. Subtract 4x from both sides, and I get 28 equals 14x. All these nice numbers, it's so wonderful. Divide by 14, and you get 2 equals x. I'm sure if we plug everything back in, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 28. That's the square root of 36. If I do this over here, I have uh, 3 times 2 times 2. Uh, square root of 4, that's going to be 2, so I'd have 6. That's 6 minus 6 equals 0, so that works. All right, last two examples here, and this is where checking is actually going to come into play. I know some of you guys aren't believing me right now, but it will come into play. We have a radical uh, isolated here, square root of 2x. If I square that, I also have to square the left side. So on the right side, it's easy. I get 2x. Now, a common mistake here, this is going to be bad, is to distribute this and get x squared minus 16. That is bad. You cannot do that. Okay? We can't distribute across addition or subtraction for exponents. What I can do is I can write it as x minus 4 times x minus 4. When I do this, I FOIL and I get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. Some of you guys are able to skip that step and just go straight to x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 2x. I think this is an ACT question, actually. How do we solve now? Well, we got to get set the equation equal to 0 because this is a quadratic. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x, and we get x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals 0. How do you solve now? Well, we factor. Are there two numbers that multiply together to give me 16 and add together to give me negative 10? Of course, there are x minus 8 and x minus 2. x minus 8 and x minus 2 would multiply together to give us 16 and add together to give us negative 10. If I set those equal to 0, I'm going to get x equals 8, and I'm going to get x equals 2. This is where checking comes into play. So if I do 8 minus 4 equals the square root of 2 times 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. 2 times 8 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So 8 works. This is one solution. The other way is 2 minus 4. That's my other x value. Square root of 2 times 2. That's 2 minus 4 is negative 2. I mean, Erase that a little bit. Uh, 2 minus 4 is negative 2 equals the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is only 2. It's not negative 2. And so now this does not work. And so I put a big fat red X there. And, and this is an extraneous solution. And that happens from time to time. All right. So X equals 8 is our only solution. I'm going to roll through this last one very quickly because I know it's been a long video so far. I'm going to square both sides. That gives me x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 2x plus 28. That's going to give me x squared plus 4x 
plus four. I foiled, so if you need to, do first, outer, inner, last. 2x plus 28. If I subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 28 from both sides, I'm going to get x squared minus, or no, plus 2x minus 24 equals 0. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 24 and add together to give me 2. I'm going to go with x equals uh, positive 6 and negative 4. And that's going to give me x equals negative 6 and x equals 4. What do, I, what do I have to do now? Well, I plug them back in. And if I plug in um, 4, all right, I would say, or if I plug in negative 6, I'll get negative 6 plus 2 equals the square root of 2 times negative 6 plus 28. That's negative 4 equals, let's see, that's negative 12 plus 28, the square root of 16 negative 4 does not equal 4 and so this is an extraneous solution use the red pen just to make sure we don't count that and then if I try 4 that one should work that would give me 4 plus 2 equals square root of 2 times 4 which is 8 plus 28 so that 6 equals the square root of 36 which is correct and so that is my solution extraneous solution here, extraneous solution here, and that's why we don't use them. So I hope this helps, and I uh, hope you learned something. Remember to isolate the radical, undo the radical by raising it to the exponent that will do that, and then solve from there. So enjoy, and good luck.